It started. Nigeria was a mere spectator to the deadly Ebola crisis, sweeping West Africa, but now there are fears that country could be on the verge of becoming the next hot zone for the virus, with health officials there warning every nation and every individual is at risk. Ninety-three days tells the story of the Ebola incidents in Nigeria, uh, the story of the people who were at the forefront of the fight against Ebola in Nigeria. Um, but it also is a story of a shared experience of a nation and the story of what is possible for us as a country when we all come together as one. The movie is about uh, how Nigeria handled the Ebola crisis when a uh, Liberian executive came to Nigeria with Ebola and went to the first consultant hospital and how the whole matter was handled. 93 Days is a phenomenal story about the bravery of certain individuals in Nigeria, how some people sacrifice their lives to ensure that all of us are here today. It's a story of leadership, how leaders can make a difference in the society. And it also shows you what we can do if we work together as a team. The story of how Nigeria dealt with this outbreak is a story of amazing victory. It's a triumph. And it's a story that a lot of people don't know. Here, look. Look at this. Is this what you want? Is this what you are willing to allow to happen in this city? There are upwards of 21 million people here. I know what Ebola can do, trust me. I'd been following the news about Ebola in West Africa, and I thought that this story was going to be the story of Dr. Adedevo and Dr. Ohari not letting Patrick Sawyer leave the hospital. But when I came here, I found that there was a much richer, much broader, wider story about all of the people that contracted the disease, about the people from First Cults Consultants, about the reaction of the state, about the federal reaction. And, and I began to realize that this was a story that was in a lot of ways about Nigeria. And within that first research week, I went from being interested to be here and to talk about this film to desperately wanting to see this film get made. I'll go and visit her, take some food. Stroke on us, stroke is this damn Ebola that did this. You know, usually um, when you're giving a script, it's not about someone who's, you know, someone who's existed, someone you, you could have met or someone you've read about. It's usually about a character and a story. But for this, it was totally different for me because it was the first time I was playing someone real. And with someone real, what you want to do is to be as, you know, as real and how do you get that uh, by understanding the person's character by you know the, you know people we have tiny things that we do like when I talk I gesticulate a lot so she would have had something that she did her laugh you know the way she looked at people but unfortunately for me there was none of that even though I was playing a real life person I couldn't get any video clips on her but I did meet people who knew her and I had so many stories about her even from my friends. Oh, I play Morris Ibauchi, who's uh, one of uh, five or six doctors who survived the Ebola crisis at a time when they had to put their lives on the line, in the line of fire. Morris currently works uh, his resumed duties at uh, First Consultant Medical uh, in Obalende. Uh, such a great guy. Dr. Adegono is a young doctor who worked at First Consultants at the time Patrick Sawyer came in to the hospital. She was, so to speak, a protege under Dr. Adadevo. And um, she had primary contact with Patrick Sawyer and ended up contracting the deadly Ebola virus. And uh, the story pretty much tells how she was able to fight through it. And I'm talking about her in real life because she actually does, she, she survived it. So I, I tell the story of her journey through catching it dealing with it and being a survivor from it. Stop! So stop! Don't tell me to come down! Why? Patrick Sawyer presents um, a multiplicity of interpretations. Um, 
for most Nigerians, we see him as the demon. You know what I mean? With, with every negative intention. Um, but creatively, I managed to find a balance somewhere. Initially, when I tried to present him as a humane kind of person, we also find out that he had various encounters while he was in hospital. And one or several, he was violent. He was a desperate human being at some point. He needed help. He denied the fact that he needed that amount of help. Uh, unfortunately, that caused the death of me, several Nigerians. So, who is Patrick Sawyer? The spirit that was part of this entire project was that it was a sense of responsibility that everybody felt, from crew to cast, that wanted to see us get this project and get it right. And each and every one of these actors, you know, came to set with that attitude. Danny Glover, interestingly, we had wanted to play a much smaller role, a cameo role nearly. And we sent him the script to take a look at and, you know, say to us whether he could do it or not. I think a day later he called me back and said, well, he's very, he loves this project, he thinks it's a very important project and a story that needs to be told. And he'd be happy to be part of it. But he said, not for the role that you sent me to read. And I said, well, so what then would we do? So he said, well, you know the doctor who owns the hospital who, why don't I play that doctor? Because I think he has an interesting arc and an interesting story. He said, would you like to do that? I said, yes. I said, well, fine, why not? One of those things that I knew ab initio is that this film wasn't going to give you room for gymnastics. You know, there was not going to be any razzmatazz. So it was going to boil down to two things, the performances and the look of the film. It was really essential that you got the two right, you, you know, the, the performance and the look. Um, and so once we were sure we had the actors right, the next thing was getting the right crew. And um, I had always been, you know, attracted to Yinka's work and um, so I was very particular about working with Yinka um, Edwards on this project. First of all I'd like to say it was a privilege um, to be asked to photograph this picture. It's a major event that has happened in the life of our country and also the world. And thing about Steve I think he knows exactly what he wants you know what he's willing to collaborate with the cinematographer to get the image to tell the story he wants to tell. All right, here we go. Quiet, roll sound. Speed. Roll camera. See, 55, 60, 40, 70. Action. Um, Bola Bello, who did the production design as well, was keyed into in terms of the colors of the world that we're discussing and was able to reflect that, you know, in the different sets that, um, that, that we did. And so experience then became something that was very key in the crew that we, you know, we got together because we needed to have people who knew exactly what they were doing, could move very fast and get things done. You know, one of the biggest challenges of the project was that we were filming it in Lagos. But the fact that we were filming it in Lagos was also a unique thing in the project because the story itself happened in Lagos. And what was even more unique was that we got to shoot in the actual venues or the actual locations where these stories happen. Soya came and was taken to First Consultant Hospital. We shot in First Consultant Hospital, but not just that, we shot in the actual room that Sawyer died in. I mean, how more pressing can you be in terms of doing it as it was? And again, we went to Yaba, um, which is the, the, the Yaba Mainland Hospital, which is where you know, all the patients were isolated. And we shot in Yaba Mainland Hospital, but again, not just in Yaba Mainland Hospital, but we shot in the actual wards that these people were isolated in. That's Again, part of the unique thing of the fact that we shot it in Lagos. Even more unique is the fact that we got the actual ambulance drivers, you know, who were the ones who drove to pick people and bring them to the wards and take them however they were moving them. So it brings a layer of authenticity to the project that we're able to do all of that. So whilst shooting in Lagos was a challenge, I consider it a blessing because it offered us the opportunity to get that layer of authenticity added to the project. So that was a very important thing for us. The music was actually inspired by the characters themselves. Um, we are dealing with a bunch of 
highly professional and very human uh, doctors who immediately put themselves on the front line of, of this horrible disease in order to save millions. So that was a, a very inspiring thing and uh, I wanted the music to be as organic and as human as possible. We always knew with Steve that we were going to record a live orchestra and use uh, you know, the, the orchestral template as means of, of accentuating the drama uh, of, the, of, of the characters and, and, and the storyline. But we also wanted to have um, you know, a, a more authentic Nigerian um, you know, uh, voice, in a sense. So we decided to use um, a vocalist um, uh, to kind of include within the um, orchestral template and uh, we found a wonderful singer uh, who is based in LA called Oni, who has a Nigerian uh, heritage. And, uh, you know, she came in and, you know, we recorded uh, a lot of ad-libs, a lot of improvisations, uh, which, uh, uh, in a sense, we chopped up in post-production and included within the orchestral uh, uh, template. And the kind of union uh, worked fantastically well, so we get uh, you know, the, the dramatic aspects from the orchestra and the authenticity from the Nigerian voice. We have a lead composer who is George Callis and then we have Tunde Jagede who's, you know, doing additional scores for the film, as well as the songs that are the music of the film. Really was a great experience, um, especially working with the singers Omar Wumi, Brymo and Diana Baroni many of them for the first time. Um, there's some of, the, some of these artists I wanted to collaborate with for a, for a long time. We also had the chance to work with some of the young musicians and singers from Muzon and the Muzon Ensemble. And I had an invaluable team working with me, especially the engineer, Ola Akinyede. Everybody will connect to the Ebola crisis. Everybody will connect to what happened then, you know, the amount of fear, the amount of risk. It's, it's no be joke matter. <laughs> Ebola is not something you play with, so I think everybody will connect with it and um, hopefully they get to love very much the, the, um, the contribution I made, which is the, the soundtrack to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the movie itself. I worked on a song called Because You Cared, which is the title song for the soundtrack. Uh, I co-produced the song with an incredible producer called TK and I featured um, uh, another artist who's an incredible singer called Miel. And together we were able to create this song called Because You Cared. Um, you know, no matter what the situation is, no, no matter what you find yourself up against, you know, you can overcome. Um, and it pays tribute to those who sacrificed in order to help these people overcome the situation that they had. So it's a very, very beautiful song. I'm very proud of the work that we did. And, uh, and I'm very proud to be associated with the project. This has been the most pleasurable and the most productive relationship I think I've ever had with a director. I would hope that as people look at 93 Days, they will realize two things. One, the great sacrifice that was made uh, by the doctors and staff and first consultants. The commitment that was made by the government and other officials and organizations that st stepped up uh, to lend a hand uh, at this time of crisis. I would also hope that they realize that the only thing that makes you special is action. The world must say this. The world must come to terms with the fact that these things indeed happen and the way they were reported. As a matter of fact, much more than the much that went out to the public space through social media and every other medium of communication. For once, Nigerians are not united by soccer, football, politics, money, we're united by our humanity. That's why I say we were all invested in the events that happened in those 93 days. We all share a part of it. So you're coming to see this film, not the actors performing. You're coming to see yourself in the characters as they play out, because you also have a story to tell about 93 days. It's a very powerful film, very impactful film. It has very carries very strong messages. It will be an exciting journey of love, of pain, but ultimately the victory and the triumph of the human spirit. It is an inspirational film and that you would find inspiration and a reason to, to reconnect with the better human in you 
after you see the film. So I, I believe that is an experience that a lot of people would love. Most of us live our lives without ever really understanding how connected we are. But then one day, something happens. Something that changes the way you look at the world. Changes your life. Forever.